Chapter 2. In the Doghouse. At breakfast that morning, I remember Mother looked up from the stove, took a breath, and said, I smell a storm. I shivered a little because my mother's nose was always right. My daddy said, well, you kids better stay close to the house. And the morning went by slow and scary. But we did stay close to the house. Folks didn't call our part of the country Tornado Alley for nothing. Along about lunch, it hit. Only there was no warning like we had today. No funnel cloud, no nothing. One minute we were eating beans and biscuits at the table, and the next there was a roar, worse than a train, worse than a hundred trains. And then there came a terrible tearing sound like the world was being ripped apart. I can still hear it in my mind. I looked up and I saw a sky. The ceiling was gone, clean gone. There was the sky. The tornado had torn the roof off the kitchen and left the food on the table and us in our seats. My daddy was the first to be able to speak. He said, well, I'm surprised to find myself alive. And that's how we all felt. We looked at our arms and our legs to make sure they were still hooked on us. Then my father pushed back his chair and said, well, let's go see the damage. Outside, the yard was not our yard anymore. The tree with the tire swing was laid flat. The tops of all the pine trees had been snapped off. And a doghouse I had never even seen before was out beside the well. A piece of bicycle was here. The hood of the car was there. I stepped over someone's clothesline and there were still some clothes on it. The roof of the kitchen lay at the end of the garden. It was folded shut like a book. We walked over there. Well, it was about time for a new roof. My dad said, he always tried to, tried to find the good into something. I was walking around looking at other people's things when I heard this rattling noise. I kept listening and looking and finally I realized the sound was coming from the doghouse. I went over to it and the doghouse was trembling. You could just see it. It was trembling, it was shaking. It was doing everything but having a fit. I looked inside and there was a big black dog. He was panting so hard I could feel his breath. He was shaking so hard the doghouse was in danger of losing its boards. Dad! Daddy, there's a dog in there! My daddy came over. Look, daddy, it's a big black dog. My daddy leaned down and took a look. There's dad, and there's Pete when he was a boy, and there's the new dog. Well, you can come out of there now, he told the dog. The storm's over. You're among friends. But the dog just kept on shaking. Maybe I can pull him out, I said. Don't you put your hand in there, my mother said. Yeah, leave him be, Pete. All that day, all that night, all the next day long, that dog shook. I brought him water, but he wouldn't drink. I brought him food, but he wouldn't eat. Then, that night, my mother leaned out the kitchen door and yelled, Supper! Like she usually did. The dog heard her and stuck his head out of the doghouse. He must have, or... Er, that must have been a familiar word. He came out and stood there, looked around for a moment, and then gave one big final shake, as if he was shaken off the past. Then he came over and joined us at the back door. I said, Daddy, can we keep him, please? Well, if we don't find the owner, can we call him Tornado? 
until we find the owner. We'll have to ask around, my mother reminded me. Oh, I know. My daddy bent down. Well, let's see what kind of manners you got, Tornado. Shake! My daddy put out his hand, and Tornado put out his paw. They shook like two men striking a bargain. And then we all went in to supper. The next chapter is called A Card Trick, and I'll read it tomorrow.